the world the Lord is come to Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Oshile here and this is Oshi Reads and today is Bookmas Day 8. Merry Bookmas. For many, many of us all over the world, Christmas Day is a celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God and the Savior of mankind. With his birth come feelings of great joy, hope, peace and goodwill. And even if for you, watching this video. Christmas is not attached to any type of religious event. Um, I still think there's something about this time of year, something about this season that inspires great joy, hope, peace, and feelings of goodwill towards others, towards all of mankind, and towards our world. There seems to be something in the air, something that just inspires us to be a little bit kinder to one another, a little bit more gracious, a little bit more understanding. We are a little bit more charitable around this time of year and a little bit more easier to get along with. I think that happiness comes a little bit more easier to us as well. Feelings of true compassion, empathy, and understanding seem to be so close to our hearts and so easily attained. In honor of those four tenets of Christmas time, joy, hope, peace and goodwill, I want to talk to you guys about some of my favorite books and specifically some of my favorite books that I read in 2016. I realized that I don't have a favorite books of 2016 video on this channel. Unfortunately that was during my long hiatus and I really do hate that I don't have some type of record of all of the books that I read in 2016 that I especially enjoyed. Now I do feel that it's a little bit too late to make a lengthy video discussing all of my favorite reads of 2016, but I would like to acknowledge some of them in this special way. For each tenet that I mentioned, each word that truly encapsulates the true meaning of Christmas for all of us here in the world, although some of us are divided by our religious beliefs, I think we can all come together and agree that there's nothing wrong with feeling hope joy, peace, and goodwill, especially around this time of year. It's a blessing and it's something that we can all share and enjoy with our loved ones. So I would like to talk to you about books that inspire those feelings within me one way or another. For the purpose of this list, we will begin with hope. Now there are two particular books that come to mind. The first one is Before We Were Strangers by Renee Carlino. I do remember that I briefly spoke about this book here on my channel with great excitement and just so much hope in regards to the anticipation of my reading experience. And this book did not disappoint. It was an amazing read and lived up to all of my expectations and more. I believe I read this novel at the perfect time. I was at a crossroads and I was trying to figure out if my nostalgia and longing for New York was truly something that was all in my head or if it was something that I needed to manifest into action by putting into place a sequence of events that would lead me to move back there. This book was just so perfect in that all of its elements came together so well and reminded me so much of my own life that I couldn't help but love it. This is a beautiful and deeply moving love story about a misconnection on Craigslist that gives two people a second chance at love 15 years later after they were separated in New York City. These two met for the first time when the male protagonist moved his stuff into his NYU dorm room and it was love at first sight. Their friendship was magical, their relationship even more so, and unfortunately they were torn apart by certain life events and the coming back together of these two people who have now become strangers to one another 15 years later is truly the definition of nostalgia and agape love with the little arrows thrown in there. The fact that I too attended NYU definitely made this reading experience even more nostalgic and special for me. The second book this wonderful tenant of hope brings to mind is Paper Princess by Erin Watt. Now I do have a full video gushing about this book which I will link now as well as below in the description box but it seems as if 
This book and the subsequent books in the series have gained recent popularity here on booktube primarily and thanks to the big booktubers that have finally caught on to this amazing series. You guys are a little bit late on the train, honey. <laughs> Paper Princess is the magical book that starts it all for the Royal series and for the Royals. We have Ella Harper, a young 16-year-old girl who is the definition of a survivor. She spent her whole life as a nomad with her mother, moving from town to town, and in the beginning of the novel, we see Ella in a very hopeless situation, and yet she never seems to lose hope, her grit, and her determination to survive and to kick life ass while it's tried to kick hers. Ella never seems to lose hope that she will climb herself out of the gutter by sheer will, determination, and hard work, and that she will make something beautiful out of a life that has started out so hard and ugly. I don't want to give too much away, but let's just say a series of unfortunate yet shortly becoming fortunate events lead Ella down a dark path where she is quickly rescued by none other than the patriarch of the royals family, of course, who brings her home to his fold and is determined to keep her, and she is quickly introduced to the other royal boys. Don't worry, there's no nasty love triangle in this one, but I will say that each of the royal boys are quite interesting indeed, and as the series continues, well, the rabbit hole just goes deeper and deeper. I encourage everyone who is a fan of New Adult and Racy New Adult to pick this one up because it is just too good to be denied. The series did hit kind of a plateau for me with this latest release that just recently came out, but I have faith in Aaron Watt, who by the way are a two-author co-partnering writing team. They have come out with other books after they started this series, and let's just say they've become autobi authors for me. I am obsessed. Moving on to our next tenant, which is Peace. And no book gave me more peace while reading in 2016 than a reread. I'd actually read this book for the first time several years earlier, but I felt a yearning to reread it again. Funny little story, I couldn't remember the name of this novel, but I could remember the synopsis and the storyline, and I just kept yearning to read it again. So, thanks to good old handy Google, I was able to put a short synopsis into my Google search and up oh, popped the title of the novel. And this one is No More Wasted Time by Beverly Preston. It is the first book in a series, the Matthews Family series. This reread is pure fantasy. I mean, especially with George Clooney getting engaged recently, this book seemed to be a bit of foreshadowing because it came out with a very, very strong storyline resembling a male protagonist that I believe was literally fashioned exactly after George Clooney several years before Clooney finally got engaged and married to a mall. Hmm. In No More Wasted Time, we have a strong female protagonist who is grieving. She's just lost the love of her life, the husband, and the father of her three beautiful children. So she escapes to Bora Bora on what should have been their anniversary. I think it was 10 year anniversary, I'm not quite sure. But in Bora Bora, she just happens to run into A-list actor Tom Clemens, who is in his late 40s, early 50s, is very debonair, suave, is known as a ladies' man, a lady killer, and seems to have a series of monogamous relationships with beautiful women, but never seems to settle down. Hmm. Remind you of anyone? these two fall in love as they gallivant all over the world from Bora Bora to Greece to France and it's so amazing to see this A-list Hollywood lifestyle that our female protagonist is introduced to and it is more than amusing to watch the famous Tom Clemens interact with our female protagonist's three beautiful and grown children. A romance about people who are older and it's just so beautiful everything realized in her life and how she basically has a Cinderella story like I told you it's pure fantasy and so peaceful and lovely to read. Up for the tenant of joy I have to say that nothing gives me more joy than discovering a new author and I will say that my favorite author that I discovered in 2016 is hands down Mariana Zapata. Mariana Zapata is an author that I discovered with her book The Wall of Winnipeg and Me which has I almost believe almost won Goodreads Voice Award, or it was nom it was definitely nominated. I'm not sure if it won for its category, but Mariana Zapata is the queen of the slow burning romance. Convinced that nobody can do it as well as she does. I've gone on to read 
art as well as cool tea. And of all these three reads, they are so different, so diverse. Sometimes when you discover an author, you find that they get very repetitive or very formulaic. After you read one, two, three, or more of their books, you start to see a pattern, you start to see their formula develop, and it becomes very mundane and monotonous. I can That's something I definitely can't say about Mariana Zapata. She is so brilliant. She is so imaginative and so creative. And so far of her books that I've read, each one is so individual and so well crafted, well thought out. She's very methodical with her writing, with her plots and her storylines, and that slow burn, I'm telling ya, there's nothing like it. No one can do it as well as she does. So I will definitely leave links to all these books that I'm talking about down below. I will leave their Goodreads pages down below, and I highly recommend her and all of her books. I can't even say I have a favorite of all of her works that I've read, because I love each of them for different reasons and it's really hard to pick a favorite. I will maybe say that the one that stuck with me the longest would be, oh, it's a close tie between Colty and Wait For It. I think because Colty was an audiobook and there was something about the experience of listening to that novel that has really stuck with me. And it was at a really interesting point in my life where I had to commute really long drives for work. And it was at a job where I felt very conflicted working there. And so reading that novel or listening to that novel rather on the way to and from work really just gave me a sense of peace and happiness and joy. And so I just, there was something about that particular time in my life that really made that audiobook experience special. And then for Wait For It, I think it was a storyline. The female protagonist was just so amazing and what she was doing for her family members that she had taken under her wing and you know these orphans that she was raising is just uh I mean she was just an angel and I just really enjoyed her strength and her love her overwhelming love so I think that's what makes that story stick out for me but The Wall of Winnipeg was excellent as well and is what introduced me to Mariana Zapata's works so I highly recommend her and last but certainly not least, we have The Tenant of Goodwill. And this one just really makes me smile because it makes me think about a series of books that I discovered in 2016 that once again just made my life so much richer and better. And this would be the Winston Brothers series by Penny Reed. And Penny Reed in general was an author I discovered in 2016 that I was just like, ugh, oh, Eureka, where have you been all of my life? She writes such smart romance, like truly smart. And I've read a lot of her books, not all, but once I started reading the Winston Brothers series, I was hooked from page one from book one. And these brothers are definitely one of a kind. They are red-haired and a few brown-haired brothers. There's one sister in the bunch. And they live in Tennessee. They're a ragtag bunch. Each brother is so unique and so different. And you guessed it, each book follows a different brother. Now the whole series isn't out yet, so you still have time to catch up until the next book comes out very soon, by the way, next year. And I just don't know how to explain it. Each of these brothers, they're so lovable and they're such good people. They have such good hearts. I love how as a family, they all stick together. They all love one another and they all have each other's backs. I will say that so far, my favorite book is probably Beard Science, which features the brother Cletus, who I think is my personal favorite. I also listened to that on Audible and that audiobook was sheer perfection probably one of the most amazing audiobooks I've ever listened to in my life. So if you have an Audible subscription, I highly recommend that one. So that is it for this video. I hope that you guys are feeling these feelings of hope, joy, peace, and goodwill during this season. And if you aren't, don't give up. I have had some dark, dark Christmases and I'm so glad that I stuck it out and I'm still here. And you know, there's always light at the end of the tunnel and things always do get better, even if they don't feel like it or look like they will. You know, that's just life. It's There's ups and downs and there's always gonna be an up when you're in a down season. And it's really hard to hear it from someone else when they're not there. But I've been there and I can say with full confidence that your up is coming.
I wish all of you great hope, joy, peace, and I feel so much goodwill towards each and every one of you. Thank you so much for clicking and watching this video. I hope you subscribe and stick it out with me here and become part of the Osh fam. I hope you found some new books and new authors to explore, and I will catch you all in my next Bookmas video. Bye. Love you guys. Mwah. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, bye. Or if you purchase a special edition of their favorite novel or their favorite series, or a signed copy signed by the author. Now these definitely are going to hold sentimental value to the person that you are gifting them to. but.